In this video, I'm going to be talking about interpreting data. I'm going to cover different types of data that we can analyze, explicit and interpretive and representations, and how to locate patterns and trends in data. All right, so let's start with different types of data. Quantitative and qualitative are generally the types of data that you would be analyzing. Uh, quantitative, if you think of the word quantity, Quantitative has to do with something that can be measured and usually represented by a number. So uh, height, um, fastest speeds, uh, statistics in sports, these are all quantitative and they can be measured and recorded by a number. Qualitative are, if you think of quality, it's something that generally can't be measured by a number. So for example, um, hair color, uh, softness, um, when you're describing a quality of something, it's a quantitative, it's quantitative data. There's also explicit data and interpretive data. So and I'll, I'll give you an example to, to, to go through these. Explicit data is data that I don't really learn anything new from it, right? So here's my collected data. Um, I wanted to find out what the favorite colors were in room in class 705. And these were the color choices. They had to pick one of these. And here are my tallies. So this is an example of explicit data. I've taken my survey results and I've explicitly represented them in a graph. I don't learn anything new from this. It's literally this, but in a bar graph. Um, so I can basically get the same information from the original sort of collection of data as I can from the ultimate graph. What we want is interpretive data. So I'll take the same information and make an interpretation. What is it that I observe? What is it that I notice in this data? And that's what you'll see here. So I took the information and I made the interpretation that 50% of the class likes the color red. So I recreated it into a circle graph. Circle graphs are used to, to, to show sections of a whole. And I showed that 50% liked red and then I did the other um, sections of the circle graph to represent the other color. And so my interpretation of the data is 50% of the students like red. And my graph supports that interpretation and demonst represents it in um, a mathematical form. So let's look at some other data and see if we can establish any patterns or trends. All right. Um, so I wanted to find uh, if there was you know, any kind of correlation or connection between period of the day and the amount of time student participated. So how many times students put up their hand to answer a question or participate. I wanted to see if that changed depending on what day um, uh, what, what period that was. So here it shows the days of the week um, and the periods of the day. Now, of course, with something like this, I would want to do a lot, I would want to collect the data over a long period of time. This is sort of a sample of data. It's only one week, so it doesn't really give us a true sense of participation. So when I'm looking at this data, I can see that, you know, there is a decline in the morning and then there's a little increase and then a decline sort of the highest periods are usually the first period or the fifth period. The least amount is normally the last period. There's an anomaly here where the fifth period has more participation than the first period. And this is where having more data would help because I don't know maybe that was just a really fun period, who knows. But can I make any interpretations based on this data? So I might make the interpretation that there's a trend that after a break, right? So when the students first come in in the beginning of the day, there's the most participation. And then after fourth period, when they have lunch recess, there is a jump again in participation. Now, how would I represent that? Come up with some ideas and be willing to share. All right, another one. Patterns and trends. So I wanted to see if there was a connection between um, if there were more office visits, so students being sent to the office, in the morning than in the afternoon. So again, it's a sample. If I wanted to really collect true data, I would do this over a long period of time. Um, but I've given us one week. So here's the days of the week, here's the morning and the afternoon, and here are the number of students sent to the office. So in the AM, we've got four, six, nine, five, and six. And in the afternoon, I've got 9, 19, 18, 7, and 11. Well, I can definitely see that there's a trend towards, in the afternoon, there's usually more uh, students being sent to the office. 
there's some extra information here where there's an indoor recess. Maybe I want to think about, does that have any effect on my data? Could I make any interpretations about that? So your assignment is interpret this data and think about ways that you could represent it to support your interpretation.